Hey guys, how you doing? I feel like I'm a little bit late to the punch on this one. Uh, it's my Suicide Squad review. I mean, this came out a while ago now, but I've only just started doing these videos. This film really gave me such a strong reaction and I felt like I just wanted to talk about it and rant about it for a bit because it wasn't necessarily a positive reaction, I'm afraid to say. Seriously, the hell's wrong with you people? We're bad guys, it's what we do. I'm also gonna have some spoilers through this, so if you haven't seen it, you've been warned. So Suicide Squad is the newest addition to the DC universe of films, and I think it's fair to say that Warner Brothers haven't had a very smooth go of it so far with their universe, particularly when they're trailing behind the likes of Marvel, who are just absolutely killing it in the superhero arena. Written and directed by David Ayer, who's done some really great work in the past. He wrote Training Day, he wrote End of Watch. He's also written and directed Fury, starring Brad Pitt. He also wrote the screenplay all the way back in 2001 for the original Fast and the Furious. And I know that they're sort of popcorn-y, like lame sort of movies, but I must admit, I have a super soft spot for the Fast and Furious franchise, except for the most recent one. I didn't know much about Suicide Squad before I knew this movie was coming out, but knowing David Ayer's history, I was into it. As soon as the IMAX tickets were on sale, I bought two for the opening night in 3D. I couldn't wait. And then on the night, I was there with bells on. But slowly as the film wore on, those bells got ripped the fuck off. Oh, because I tell ya, this film is a mess. DC, unfortunately, are missing something crucial and they don't seem to be able to put out the kind of quality that they really need to be putting out to sort of justify this huge universe they're trying to build. I mean, I have a lot wrong with this film, but possibly my biggest gripe isn't the writing, isn't the completely disjointed structure, the confusing stock superhero ending, but it's really sort of how David Ayer directs this film and, and the fundamentals behind selling moments and, and introducing us to characters, you know, and the ability to give weight to the moments that really deserve them. So to contextualize that a bit, you know, the last time that the Joker was on screen, his last incarnation was in 2008's The Dark Knight with Heath Ledger. You know, everybody knows about that film. Everyone knows the story behind Heath and his death and, you know, his incredible performance. And so given everything that we know about that and that there's not been a Joker on screen in film since then, you'd sort of expect some sort of awesome intro into the film to be like, hey, here's the Joker, he's back on our screens, how awesome is that? Like in The Dark Knight, you know, the whole opening sequence was dedicated to the introduction of the Joker. And when he rips that mask off and he's like, I believe whatever doesn't kill you simply makes you stranger. It's so fucking awesome. But in Suicide Squad, we don't get anything like that whatsoever. Literally in the first couple of minutes, we've been introduced to Will Smith's dead shot, but then it just cuts from him straight to a boring as fuck, two shot, wide shot of Joker and Harley Quinn sitting at a table having a discussion. And that's it. That's our epic introduction to this character that hasn't been seen on screen in almost 10 years. Holy anti-climax, Batman. That lacks so much punch and it just doesn't feel like there's any kind of oomph behind this moment of he's the, the newest Joker. So anyway, from there, the film sort of devolves into this convoluted mess of scenes backed onto scenes with no sort of cohesion or like narrative sense or anything. It kind of just jumps from one point to the other and just does not feel like it's part of a whole. Gentlemen. Ladies, what if Superman had decided to fly down, rip off the roof of the White House, grab the president right out of the Oval Office? Who would have stopped him? I could go on all day about the problems for this film, but to save the runtime, I'll finish off with a couple of positives. Will Smith. It was awesome seeing Smith in this role. Y'all jokers must be crazy. 
just being a badass with attitude, just fucking guys up left and right. It just was really awesome to watch him, you know, play around in the sandbox of his character. But also because his character is pretty much one of the only ones in the film to get any kind of meaningful attempt at a backstory or any kind of arc. I mean, it's not much that he gets, but it's better than pretty much what anyone else in the film gets, which is very little or nothing. And the other positive, I really enjoyed watching Margot Robbie play Harley Quinn in this. I wouldn't say that her performance was necessarily that strong, but like Will Smith, she just seemed to be having so much fun with this character. You know, it was just really awesome to see her wreaking havoc throughout the film. And yeah, it was just a lot of fun. Hi boys. What was that? I should kill everyone and escape? Sorry. The voices. <laughs> I'm kidding. That's not what they really said. And finally, a lot of people are sort of saying that Jai Courtney actually was somewhat of a highlight in this film. And I agree he wasn't necessarily the worst, but I'm just really reserved about saying anything positive about fucking Jai Courtney because his, some of his past jobs, man, have just been abysmal. <laughs> Terminator Genesis. I mean, yeah, I just refuse to say anything good about this guy even though he was okay in this. I just have to mention quickly, the music choices in this film were really perplexing. I mean, some of them fit and some of them were fun, but then there's a scene about just towards the end of the first act where they've all just got together and they're all suiting up and, you know, getting their shit together, ready to go off to battle. And for some reason, Eminem starts playing, but not, even a famous or good Eminem track, one of his worst single releases from when he was somewhat trying to do a comeback. And I mean, I'm a huge Eminem fan, but even this song and that album was really pretty terrible. It just felt like a really odd choice and I couldn't understand why it was in there. And there's a few moments like that throughout this film where music choices just feel really Oh, jarring. And he's like, hmm, why the fuck is that in there? Why? I would have to say that I'd give Suicide Squad a one and a half out of five. There's some fun that can be had in this film, but overall it just really isn't anything redeeming. And it just is a giant mess of a film. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed my rant slash review on Suicide Squad and let me know if there's any other movies or TV shows you'd want to hear my thoughts on because yeah, I'm really enjoying making these videos so I hope you guys are liking them. Anyway, till next time. See you later.